Hello you guys, welcome back, welcome back, welcome to my channel, Jesus Wants You. Listen, I know I've been missing in action for about a week, the week rolled around so fast. Yes, my hair is still straight, but I lighten it up, the color, I had had enough. I'm used to the lighter color, so here I am. Now, with that said, we have a very important, important video to do i do today um i've been busy like no other um preparing my voice for this upcoming wedding uh, right now it feels like it's been exercised yeah um so i hope i don't get a little rowdy and loud and obnoxious um in this video but anyway Upcoming wedding. It's been busy. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Belated Mother's Day. Um, Mother's Day had me busy. Um, practices for this upcoming wedding for May 30th. So if um, it seems like, you know, I'm a little lagging, don't forget, I'm a full-time employee, full-time mom, the whole nine yards, and trying to keep up with this with with the ministry so um anyway with that said i hope you didn't come to this channel without your bible please get your bible because this is a very important video what is this video titled today tv show preach work of the holy spirit no let's just go and get that air clear right now no okay um so for those of you who are new to this channel, you may not know me. I am Nikki Pratt, the watchman of uh, the Jesus Wants You channel. I've been watching. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to warn and deliver a message. I've spotted something on my radar. Um, I need to warn you about so you won't fall into Satan's tactics because he is busy. And he knows that he has but a short time. And um, part of a watchman's job is to reproof, which means to expose. And um, sometimes I have to do that. And that's exactly what I want to do. Um, Satan wants you to um, fall in line with the other little minions. But I'm here to make sure that don't happen the new reality show preach now if many of you haven't seen it it is due on lifetime june 5th i was actually passing by the television at somebody's house and saw a segment of it about two weeks ago two weeks ago i wanted to do a video on it but i couldn't find anything on it not on google not on youtube and i'm like what is going on i know i saw this on lifetime and uh, let me tell you something. If you are a real, true Christian and you have no business watching this, and I will tell you why later in the video, because Satan is trying secretly, secretly uh, to take the people with him through his craftiness by what we have. Why? Um, if you're a Christian, you have to be sober and vigilant of today uh, so let me introduce you to these four ladies many of you haven't seen it these are the four um, prophetess um, they are um, I will introduce them to you it says uh no another reality show this time focus is on prophetesses mm -hmm. so um, let me take the time out to introduce you to them it's four of them um, the first one name is Belinda Scott. Um, it says Belinda considers herself a major prophetess who has given counsel to politicians and celebrities across the country. She has the ability to predict childbirth and specializes in blessing the wombs of heaven, uh, blessing the wombs of barren women. Sorry, Belinda's protege, Hadassah. Elder grew up Muslim and has never seen a woman in the pulpit. So adjusting to new life as a Christian protege will have its challenges. 
Takeda Williams of Columbus, Ohio. Takeda has been called the Beyonce of the preaching world and totes a global following. She trains her protege with a strict strict hand and isn't afraid to drop someone if they don't come up to her standards. Her protege, Rebecca Hairston, is a single mother with three children. Linda Rourke, Trenton of, of Trenton, Ohio. Linda's specialty is delivering people from the street, bringing them to God. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Known as the blue-eyed soul sister. She has been told that she looks white, but she preaches black. And is admired in African American churches um, for her ability to roar and get the room standing on their feet. Linda's protege, Angel Pound, had a rough start in life, a former drug addict who has now turned her life around. She is still haunted by a past that threatens her chances of becoming a prophetess. Kelly Cruz of Cleveland, Ohio. Kelly is Belinda's former protege who is now building her ministry of her own. Uh, of her own. The only single prophetess in the group, she has trouble finding a man who can handle her gift. Kelly's protege, Stacy Williams, is newly married and pregnant and struggles with making her prophetic training a priority. Six one-hour episodes have been ordered. Preach premieres June 5th at 9 central time. Preach follows four powerful female leaders who believe God has given them the ability to heal the sick. Okay, that is one of our attributes. Um, okay, um, to heal the sick, see the future, and rid people of their addictions. Known as prophetesses, these women speak as the interpreter through whom the will of God expressed. I should have brought some water. In order for their legacy to continue, they must enlist a protege and teach them how to carry on their gift. These queens of the church have each have different style and their own special way of delivering God's message. I do declare. But all are united in their love of the Lord. Preach is produced by a media group. Now, let me just read to you guys some of the backlash that's been happening because of this show, Preach. Um, somebody said, I cannot believe this. I believe in God wholeheartedly. But watching this is, an inter is as entertainment just seems wrong. And it looks so fake. Leslie Sierra said, okay. This is a bit much. This makes religion look like it's all a show. Now, religious people don't understand speaking in tongues or having the Holy Ghost. It's a special gift, and this makes lightly of it. Stop looking for reality shows to air and go to church if you want to spread the gospel. Amen to that. Another person says, I can't believe I just saw a woman jump on this man's breast to hit his chest. Wow. So... Out of order, you're a married woman jumping to a man's chest. Shaking my head. We go with every wind of doctrine. If you don't like what I had to say regarding that part, you can delete yourself. Somebody says, lifetime, y'all need to quit. Another comment says, I take my assignment as a prophet very seriously. I'm not looking to broadcast nothing God is doing through me. They really need to stop playing. Lifetime, you've gone too far this time. Okay, I can't um, read more of that, but let me just tell you. Um, let me go into this before I get into something else here. Let's see. All right. So, get your Bibles. Get your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. Pause the video if you have to. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. 4 says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words 
of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Notice I said demonstration of the spirit and power. Verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Believe you me, listeners, that this power that these gals are implementing is not of the power of God, by no means. And uh, with that said, I must tell you and inject this right now. I'm going to do a video on the Holy Spirit, the role of the Holy Spirit. Um, what it's for, about the gifts of the Spirit, and all that. It is so important of the day. Um, so I can clear some of this buffoolery up. Write that word down. This is a new word that you need to put in your vocabulary. Your vocabulary. Your vocabulary. Um, buffoolery. B-E-F-O-O-L-E-R-Y. Hmm? I stole that from a friend of mine, Tanisha Davis. Yes, I did. Um, I don't know why she used it, but I said I like that word. Because look, bethoolery, bethoolery, B-E-F-O-O-L-E-R-Y, bewitchment and foolishness. Shorten it up, bethoolery. So when you see some foolishness like this going on, say that's some bethoolery right there. Yes, it is. Now, moving right along. Turn your Bibles real quick to Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Okay? It says, O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you? O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? See, this show is not how the Holy Spirit works. If you guys haven't seen it, you see a woman running down the aisle, one of the prophetess running down the aisle and hits a man in the chest with her chest and knocks him down. Really? That's not of the Spirit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, and I'm going to go on more about this. Um, if you haven't seen the TV show clip, you can find it on YouTube. Google it. Um, the, uh, another one pushes a lady head, practically pushes her to the floor. Mm -hmm. And then Takeda Williams blowing her breath in someone's face. Like she got so much power. <gasps> and the man go, poof. <gasps> And fall down. Is that the work of the Spirit? I don't think so. It's buffoolery is what it is. I'm just saying. Okay. It's preachers. It's let me let me tell you what's going on. Okay. It's the reality shows, the preachers exes, the preachers ex-wives, um, Satan versus the kingdom is what's going on. The world will show you reality shows of preachers of L.A., preachers' daughters, um, looking so that people that are on the fence, straddle the fence, are trying to make a decision to accept Christ because they're looking at things that's going on in the world and um, the Spirit is pouring out and they know they need to be somewhere. They should be... They want to be a part of something, but they don't know what. So they want to look for answers. And like many, they go to television and they send these preachers, like the preachers of L.A., that buffoolery. And they looking at this and they're going, oh, is that how the church act? Is, is that what church is all about? Because that looks just like me. Why would I want to be a part of that? I don't have to go to church. Why do I need to go to church? See, that's Satan's MO. That's Satan's method of operation. To get those potential Christians, the people that can call on Jesus' name in the last day and look at this buffoolery and say, well, they look just like me. Why do I need to go to church? The preacher's daughters, especially, 
No, 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 no. See, there's Satan twisting and perverting what God has set out to be for the church, for meaning, for use. Not like this, okay? These four women have brought cameras in the church for the sake of fortune and fame. Uh, knock me, say what you want. But on this channel, I tell it like it is. I tell it like it is. Okay? I tell the truth. And that's exactly what it is. It is making a mockery of Christ and the Holy Spirit and its power. Making people believe that they have the power. With that said, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. If you need to pause it, pause it. Because I must keep flowing. Verse 6, and these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Verse 7, for who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? Now, if anybody didn't understand thou, this, and that, I'm going to break it down to you in layman's term. Let me paraphrase it. Verse 7 said, for who maketh thee diff differ from another? Meaning, who and what made you different from, work, from another? God said, we are in the world, but not of the world. Therefore, you are different. And who makes you different? If you claim to be a Christian, Jesus Christ makes you different. Amen. Okay, further breaking it down. And it says, and who hast thou that this not receive? No, I'm sorry. And what hast thou that thou this not receive? What do you have? You supposedly have the Holy Spirit. Okay, which they are operating like they do at one point. Um, okay, I don't want to say that like that. I'm going to keep reading. Okay, and it says, Now if thou didst receive it, why does thou glory? Because if you look at the video clip, they're glorying in this power by whoof, blowing their breath and blowing people down like boom, hitting people with their chest and they flying out like, really? That's putting all the glory on you and not the Holy Spirit. Uh-uh. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. And it said, and is if thou hast not, I'm sorry, now if thou didst receive it, meaning if you did receive it, which when you accepted Christ, you did receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. It says, why does thou glory like what they're doing? And it says, as if thou hast not received it. Meaning you act like you didn't got this power on your own. Who's the power from? Who's the power from? See, there's a lot of people in the body of Christ, in the church, you know, they put all this, this faith and this power in the man and don't recognize where the power is coming from. Not from man. Ooh, I because I didn't heard it. Ooh, that man is anointed. He has power. She got power. She has child, please. That power came from somewhere and didn't come from that man. That's all I'm going to say on that right now because I, I feel my... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say on that. These shows are a distraction set up from Satan. Watch this. Turn your Bible to Luke chapter 12. It's in the Gospels, the four Gospels. Luke chapter 12, verse 35 through 40. Now, with that said, I'm not no way means putting down the Holy Spirit at all. There is power, okay? But it's, it's not 
given by man. Man isn't the one that's orchestrating it. It's not. Listen to this. Like I said, this is a distraction. But Luke chapter 12, verse 35 through 40. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. That when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Verse 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. So therefore, you don't want to be found watching buffoonery like this. Okay? Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, okay, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. Verse 38, and if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so blessed are those servants. And this note. That if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Verse 40. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Verse 43. Skip on down. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. You don't want to be found doing this. Making them rich is basically all you're doing. Verse 46. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. And at an hour when he is not aware. And will cut him in sunder. And will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Going to cut you your portion with the unbelievers. I got something that I got to play for you guys that is chilling. Okay? It's a message to the body of Christ. Watch this. Okay. What is the, the Holy Spirit's role? To teach us, to lead us in truth and remembrance. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hmm. So, I don't see captives being earnestly set free. I see them being set on the flow with breastuses. I'm just telling the truth. It is time to choose who you are going gonna serve. Who you're going to serve. Which master? Which master? Perfect timing for this. This is what I'm talking about. I want you guys to listen to something. And did y'all notice, if you listen to the video clip, notice first, when I read off that, it said that Takeda Williams was known as the Beyonce uh, in the preaching world. That's your clue right there. That should be your clue. What, what, what? Beyonce? I, I don't know about y'all, but I don't want my preacher associated with Beyonce. That's a cursing. I'm sorry. That should, that should open your eyes. That should raise your red flag right there. Your antenna should have went off. Beyonce, oh, wait till y'all see the video that I have to do Thursday. I hope I don't have practice. But, uh, ho, ho, ho. Beyonce goes a long ways in this buffoonery stuff that's going on. Oh, yeah, I'm going to open your eyes to some things. So, all right. Okay, let me let y'all hear something. Um, get this off vibrate. Um, 
And I hope I have it loud enough. But what I'm about to play for you guys is, is a prophetess, a real prophetess, okay? Um, I know you're probably saying, well, Nikki, we don't know that. We don't know her. Um, pray about every video that I do, okay? Okay? When you're led by the Spirit, you're led into truth, okay? Um, but when you listen to this, it gives you chills. And some of you know what I'm talking about. You get the goosebumps. That's what happens when the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with your spirit when you're hearing truth. Okay? All right. Uh, let me let you hear something, what she says. And what is she? She's talking about some things that the Lord spoke to her. I want you guys to hear this. Chilling. Um. September of 2016 at the Jubilee is the cancellation of She's that. being I, I interviewed. Going to take place from Listen to what she said. 2016 is the eradication of the debt system. I mean, the whole thing is going to collapse because it's it's uh, it's a house of cards, and all yeah. this, all this government debt and corporate debt is all going to crash over that year. So, um, so, so I want to talk about. Um, going into that economic collapse um, a little bit, if that's okay. Sure. He, in, in mid-February, after he told me to start stocking up, about a, uh, maybe a week later, I had another visitation. This time it was specifically at 3.33 in the morning. The Lord woke me up and he began talking to me about the churches in this nation specifically. He told me that I had to warn them. And the reason why this was different from any other time is because throughout the years, the past couple of years, what has been showing me things for this country on a rapid scale has been like, tell them this, show them that, um, post this, give them this dream, tell them this scripture, all of this. But this time, he said, when you speak, I want you to say, Son saith the Lord. And that is something in my flesh, I will tell you, is like scary. Because that's treading dangerous ground if you're not speaking from the Lord truly. But he told me, this is how I want you to write it. When you write it, and this is how I want you to say it when you say it. And I said, okay, Lord, I will obey. And he spoke to me these words, and I'm going to share it with the audience. If you Go ahead. You take your time. He said, thus saith the Lord, what is coming upon this nation will affect many who claim to follow me. This is because not everyone who is a part of the church I call my bride. Many believe that they will be shielded from the judgment when in fact they will go through it. Not everyone who calls upon my name will enter into my kingdom. For every ten people who pray to me and declare me as their Lord, I only know one. That shook me up, and I'm going to go into that in a second. Oh, dear mercy. Thus saith the Lord God. I have sent you my prophet to warn you of your disobedience and your pride, but you have rejected them. You have chosen to follow those who only speak smooth words and deception, and I have not sent them. They are not my prophet. Therefore, when I pass judgment on this nation, you will feel it. Repent, says the Lord of hosts. Turn to me and seek my faith. For the day of the Lord is at hand, and know that even in my judgment, I am merciful. Then he gave me, after that, he said that judgment would be issued upon the United States of America according to Isaiah 17, verses 10 and 11. At that point, I couldn't even tell you how verse 1 started in Isaiah 17. I've read the whole Bible. I have certain scriptures memorized, but Isaiah 17 is not one of those. Okay, now, her name is Prophetess Mina. I think she goes by Mina 
Greb of Krebin, C R E or G R E B I N or C R E B I N. Some of you listening probably already know her. Um, I felt led to play that um, little portion to let you guys hear that because let me tell you something. The spirit works on one accord. And for instance, when I was out, I uploaded, many of you seen my um, street preaching video while I was preaching. I kept saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, repent, repent. And I told somebody else this recently that when I went out there, I went out there with a whole mindset going one way. But it went in warning form. It came in warning form. Mostly all my videos come that way. Mostly. Warning. Okay, so obviously, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. What she was doing, that right there was serious. That right there was a warning. That right there was bone chilling, earth shaking. She said that the Lord said to her, out of 10 people that's claiming to be a Christian, True Christians, he only recognized one. Let me tell you something. If you can hear that and you go, ah, I'm going to tell you something right now. You best to get serious. Because the Lord is not, he's not playing. He's not playing. And you can be a, I'm not perfect. By no means. I mess up every day. We all do. But thank God for his grace and mercy. Okay. Don't discount his mercy. That's where we are giving, given the avenue to repent. Repent. Repent daily. When you hear that, if you're a true Christian, it makes you go through your life like and your day like, okay, um. Uh, like this with a fine tooth comb just okay what i need to correct what i need to it makes you want to go to your knees and repent he said out of 10 people that's claiming and pro to profess him one he recognized that's 10 to 1 people 10 to 1 i must keep i must keep moving i must keep moving um last scripture did I cover everything? Okay, that video I just played, for those of you who want to watch, is from um, True News. It's at about 18 minutes, 30 seconds. The whole video is 59 minutes long. It's from, um, I think, Rick Wild's show. He interviewed her. Her name is uh, Mina Krebin, C-R-E-B-I-N, I think. I give all credits to them. Um, I want to read to you guys this verse too concerning these prophetess. Um, and let me just say this. I'm not speaking bad about the prophetess themselves. I'm speaking about the fruit that they're bearing. Let me just make that known. Because no doubt in my mind they could they are prophetess. But just like anything else, they didn't allow Satan to come in and they're being used for the other kingdom, not God's kingdom. Who are they advancing? Themselves. They finna make a buku of money off of this instead of getting on the streets, advancing God's kingdom and preaching. Or staying in the church, advancing God's kingdom. You taking it to the streets. You, 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 you sure it's a prophet in the town. Boom! With your chest. Okay. Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. 
And it reads, And unto the angel of church of Thyatira, write, These things said the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works in charity and service and faith and thy patience. And thy works and the last do me do and the last to be more than the first. Verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. But unto you, I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations." And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Uh, this, minute, this video is 36 minutes long. I cannot end this video to ask you. There is some serious stuff going on right now, guys. We're seriously running out of time. And the next video that I'm going to have to do, um, I learned about this, um, what I'm going to do the video about next time, next video, uh, getting information on this from one of the IT people at my job. It's getting serious. It's getting down to crunch time. And um, it's time to buckle your seatbelts fasten in your in your prayer life worship life and i'm talking to me too um in your bibles and um i can't end this video to asking you are you saved it's so simple satan wants you to believe that you know it's all about you being nice love love people it's all you're he have you thinking that it's all your way well, it's not. John 14, 6 says the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. Believe that. Now, if you want to be saved, you're straddled on the fence, you heard what I said, and uh, you want to be saved today. All you have to do is repent of your sins. That means do a whole 360. Turn completely around. Turn your life completely around. Say to Jesus that you want him to reside in your heart. Ask him to come into your heart. Make you a new creature. Turn from your wicked ways. Repent of your sins. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that he died on the cross for your sins and that he was he raised he was raised from the dead. If you believe that and you believe that in your heart and you confess it with your mouth and you repent, you're saved. It sounds so simple. It's Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 11. It sounds so simple. But if you want to read that, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 11, you can for yourselves. Leave it. Um, but you can do what I just said. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, salvation is made, okay? Get baptized, for Jesus was baptized, people. Get baptized, get in a Bible-based church. Bible-based, okay? Um, do I have time to read it?
No. Okay. Um, I love you guys. Please do not miss my next few videos dealing with the Holy Spirit. Um, I had a couple of subscribers been wanting me to do a video about the Holy Spirit. I will do so. It is much needed in this time, day, and hour of what's going on. So I love you guys. Stay prayed up. Watchmen's keep watching. Keep watching. Pray at those hours. And you guys, repent. You find yourself and did something wrong, repent. Don't harbor on it. Keep it moving. Satan is the accuser. He will constantly remind you of things that you've already repented for. If you repented for it, it is gone away in the sea of forgiveness. Okay? Under Jesus Christ, that banner, that's the protection. That's what we have. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Okay? I love you guys. See you next video. Thanks.